So we left off talking about salts and how some salts can act as acids or bases and usually these salts are the conjugate acids of a weak base or a conjugate base of a weak acid. Another way of thinking about this is if you take a base and you treat it with a strong acid that it is under, going to go and undergo a, a reaction to form a material that could be a weak acid on its own right. Mm. So what we have to always can keep in mind is that this weak acid, weak base equilibrium is interrelated and that what used to be an acid can also be a base. What that means is that the Ka of the weak acid is tied to the Kb of the weak base via these equal. We know that Ka times Kb will equal Kw. Right. So we can use this, and that's the Ka of the weak acid, and that's the Kb of the weak base. We can use this information to find answers to problems, such as the following. What is the pH of a 0 0.145 molar sodium acetate solution? What is, the, what is the pH of a sodium acetate solution? <clears throat> what we need to know is the Ka of that sodium acetate, or Kb. Now, well, for that, we need to know whether it's an acid or a base. Well, sodium acetate is the conjugate base of acetic acid, and so we can look up the Kb or the Ka of this material, whichever one happens to be handy. Well, if we know that it's acetic acid, we can look up the Ka of acetic acid, and we find that it's 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. That's the Ka. And then we can use that to find the Kb of the material using Kw. Kw divided by Ka will give us Kb, or in this case, 5.55 times 10 to the negative tenth. And if we remember, Kb would be the equilibrium associated with the sodium acetate, or in this case, just the acetate ion. We don't really care about the sodium. The acetate ion reacting with water to release OH minus and reforming acetic acid. So this relates to the hydroxide ion concentration and the acetic acid at equilibrium and the amount of acetate ion present. <clears throat> of course, at equilibrium, the amount that we started with, total base, will be equivalent to x minus x. And we can use the weak acid assumption the assumption that total amount of base we start with minus x, because x is small, will be approximately equal to the total amount of base. We can plug all these values back into our equation to get x squared, or in this case, OH minus, get OH minus squared divided by the total base will equal KB in its simplest form. Now, plugging those values in, we can rearrange and solve, and we get an OH minus concentration equal to 8.97 times 10 to the negative sixth. Once you have that, you can actually answer the question, says that which is the pH. So you can rearrange this, convert that hydroxide ion concentration. Again, this is the leading mistake. where We're looking for hydroxide ion, but we're actually looking for pH. The pH would be equal to 8.95. How you get there is up to you. That was last chapter. Convert that to OH, convert that OH to H3O+, plus, convert to pH, or convert it to uh, POH. Doesn't matter to me. All of them work the same. But there we go. Very typical problem, i.e. you're going to see it on the next test. That's just the way it works. Yeah. 
So here's two other problems. I'm not going to work them for you, but I'll give you the answers, okay? What is the pH for a solution of 0 0.100 molar KNO2? And what is the pOH for 0 0.451 molar HCN? Again, two other very typical problems. The first, the first goal, the first thing you want to do is identify this as an acid or a base. So make your choice. Is this material an acid or a base? I'll give you a hint. You know, you're looking for protons. There's no obvious protons. Chances are good that unless it's a Lewis acid, it is going to be a a acid a base excuse me chances are good that unless it's a lewis acid it's going to be a base well once we know that this is a base so well what kind of base is it a strong one or is it a weak one well is it one of the common bases? Well, what are the strong bases? Strong bases are pretty much typically anything, anything with the hydroxide ion. So it's probably going to be a weak one. Well, which weak? Well, we can see that this is probably the NO2 minus ion. Which we know is derived from HNO2. Turns out that this is a weak acid. It's not nitric acid. This is the the nitrite ion. So we need to look in the table for the Ka of this weak acid. And using that Ka, we have to find Kb. The problem before the problem. Once we have Kb, we use that to find the hydroxide ion concentration, which we then use to find the pH very much like the last problem. So let's do a similar breakdown of how we would treat HCN. Is it an acid or a base? Well, if you're paying attention, you know that it's an acid. That acid then reacts to form then we have to we then have to decide whether it's a strong acid or a weak acid since it's probably a weak acid because it's not one of our strong ones we would then go from there to figure out what its ka or kb is because it's an acid we use ka we can look it up in the table if we can't find it in the table look for a competing kb for a similar KB, say like the KB of the of the cyanide ion, the conjugate base. Once we have Ka, we can rearrange, solve, plug in our starting concentrations, and obtain the hydronium ion concentration. And then once we have that, we can find pOH. Again, they both sort of have this similarity. You need use the K find whatever is most convenient when using that equilibrium constant. So for the first one, the answer is, turns out to be pH equal to 8.125. And as a nice check, if your pH isn't basic, then you're doing something wrong. It's a common mistake. You just don't check your answer pH of this material, sorry, the pOH in this case, is equal to 9.22. Alright, up to this point, the only thing we've been dealing with is one item in solution. Right. 
now we're going to look at multiple species in solution. What happens when we start mixing things together? Oftentimes, this is, again, what I like to say is it involves a problem before the actual problem. We'll be asking for one thing, but you're going to have to work through a series of alternate steps to get there. Okay. So let's just take a look at a warm-up. Very good warm-up problem. What is the pH of a solution made by adding 1.00 milliliters of a 12 molar HCl solution to enough water to make a 525 mil solution. Now, this is not a weak acid, weak base problem. This is just a dilution problem we just basically lifted from last semester. Oftentimes, we're going to be taking quantities of acid and quantities of base and dumping them into a reaction, and we'll need to count those moles. And just to remind a refresher, you know, we, this is a dilution problem, so we take that 1.00 mil of our acid, HCl. We know that because this is a 12 molar solution, that, that is equivalent to saying 12 moles of HCl in 1,000 milliliters of liquid. This says that when we drop that into that solution, we're adding 1.2 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of HCl to that solution. And once it is in that solution, we undergo a dilution. So those that 1.2 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of HCl is now dissolved in 525 mils, which we convert into liters, 0 0.525 liters to give us the molarity of our HCl, which is also equivalent to the molarity of our H3O+. Our 2.28 molar. And from that, we can find the pH being equal to 1.64. Again, nothing too difficult. Let's take a look at a similar problem. What is the pH of a solution made by adding 1 mil of a 12 molar solution of HCl? to 200 mils of a 0.1 molar solution of NaOH. Very similar problem. The starting point is still the same. Now we have a slight difference. Notice what we're doing. We're taking HCl and you're adding it to sodium hydroxide to produce H2O plus ACL. And this is from last semester. These two, this is a neutralization reaction. The HCl chews up some of the NaOH or vice versa, depending on how you look at it. And we want to know how much of what is left over. 
So in this case, your best strategy is to find the number of moles of your acid and your base. And then, before you do anything else, start comparing them. Well, we've already figured out that this is the moles of acid, because it's the same quantities, is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of HCl are present. And if we run through the calculation for the sodium hydroxide, we find that there are 2 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of sodium hydroxide left. Well, what that means is that with the 1.2 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of HCl, 2 times 10, moles of NaOH that some of the sodium hydroxide is going to cancel out some of the, the HCl. Turns out that, that we have excess sodium hydroxide. And so using our information from last semester, we know that this will use 1.2 moles of sodium hydroxide, 1.2 times 10 to the minus 2 using our skills from last semester we know that this will use up 1.2 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of NaOH and so if we subtract the initial amount from the final amount that leaves us the amount consumed sorry if we subtract the initial amount from that which is consumed that leaves us 0 0.8 times 10 to the minus 2 or 8.0 times 10 to the minus third moles of sodium hydroxide left now that is the start of the problem. That is the 8 times 10 to the 9 moles of left that is then dissolved in the 201 milliliters of solution, which we can then convert to molarity. Moles over liters to give us the molarity of the sodium hydroxide. Molar NaOH, which we can convert into pH H equal to 12.6 as the answer. So the secret to the problem is that these materials in their initial amounts cancel out and what's left over is what we care about. It's a very common trend when you have a mix an acid and a base together, there's going to be a neutralization. You do the neutralization and then you figure out what's left, what's left over in solution. From what's left over in solution, you can then obtain the pH. This is true with strong acids. It's also true with weak acids and weak bases. So as I'm saying, it's also true with weak acids and weak bases. Let's take a look at an example of just that. Let's mix a strong acid with a weak base and figure out what happens. Now, we care about two different reactions in this case. The first one is the neutralization of the weak base sodium acetate. So if you take the HCl and you treat it with sodium acetate, NaOAC, you end up pushing this reaction towards the products, and you end up generating HOAC, the acetic acid, and sodium chloride.
And depending on how much HCl you have and how much sodium acetate you generate, you can generate substantial amounts of both of these. This reaction takes place. But that is not the reaction we care about. What we really care about is the other reaction that's taking place, and that deals with the acetic acid. Acetic acid is a weak acid. This equilibrium is going to be taking place. What that means is that the weak acid equilibrium associated with the dissociation of acetic acid is still in effect. So the only way to measure the pH if there is substantial amounts of weak acid or weak base depends on where we're at. <laughs> It depends on where we're at in this equilibrium. If you add enough HCl to completely neutralize all of this material, you will have excess HCl. And then it would just be a strong acid solution. If you added not a, if you added just enough to neutralize it, you would have a weak acid solution. But when you're intermediate between the two, you would have an amount of sodium acetate and the amount of, of the weak acid. The general assumption that you care about is that all of the acid added is gets converted into the conjugate acid. So here we have our strong acid. We are, the assumption is that the moles of strong acid is exactly enough to make is, is the moles of strong acid is converted into the moles of weak acid. But this comes out of a cost. We have to use the sodium acetate to make that weak acid. And so the amount of sodium acetate would also go down. So let's take a look at this example. We have a 25 mil mixture of 0 0.100 molar HCl and 55 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar sodium acetate. And we want to know what the pH of this mixture is. So the the desire is to is to use this equilibrium, set it up, write this reaction, but it stymies you because there's where does where's your where do you get your equilibrium constant? How do we figure in the HCl? So the trick is to treat this like a neutralization. And then look at what's left over. So what we can find is that we start with, again, we do our calculation. We can find that this is 2.5 times 10 to the minus third moles of HCl mixed with 5.5 times 10 to the minus third moles of acetate acetate ion. at equilibrium sorry excuse me before equilibrium we know that this will be converted into acetic acid all of the HCl will be consumed for every one HCl that's consumed you make one HCl a, a, for every one HCl consumed, you make one acetic acid to generate 2.5 times 10 to the minus third moles of acetic acid. But this comes at the cost of 2.5 times 10 to the minus third moles of HOAC consumed of the, of the acetate. This comes at the cost of the acetate. So 
So 2.5 times 10 to the minus third moles of the acetate are consumed. to make the acetic acid, leaving us with three times 10 to the minus third moles of acetate. Now, now we have enough to solve the problem. We know how many moles of acetate there are. We know how many moles of, um, of acetic acid are present. We can convert these back into molarities using our volume of 70 mils. Once we have those, we can then plug those back into our equilibrium statement. So we know that we have 3.125 times 10 to the minus 2 molar HOAC, and we know that we have 3.75 times 10 to the minus 2 molar OAC minus acetate, and there's an equilibrium constant associated with this. We know that there's an equilibrium constant associated with this. Ka is equal to concentration of the acetate ion times H3O plus all divided by the amount at equilibrium. Now these are our amounts after right assuming right after the reaction has has the mixture has been poured all the neutralization takes place and we're going to assume that equilibrium hasn't taken place yet. So we know from our knowledge of, of equilibriums that whatever this initial amount is minus what is consumed will serve as our equilibrium concentrations and we could plug those back in and whip out the quadratic but these are weak acids these are weak bases the equilibrium constant is not k x isn't going to be large the change is not going to be large because they are equilibriums weak acid equilibriums they're not going to have a large change and so that means is we can again use our weak acid assumption to say that the initial amount of the HOAC and the initial amount of the acetate will approximate what they were once the reaction ended. And we can plug those values in and solve for the hydronium ion concentration. We get a, we get a hydronium ion concentration 1.5 times 10 to the minus fifth hydronium ion concentration which corresponds to a pH is equal to 4.823 okay. we can use this weak acid assumption when we have substantial quantities of material this is something called a common ion effect right, when you have a common ion we can think of H plus and OAC and Na plus OAC sharing the common ion of the acetate. When you have a common ion that is interacting on both sides, adding that common ion can suppress the reactivity, can suppress the reaction. And we see this a lot in in solutions that have a lot of salts, you can add common ions to drive reactions. But the, where we really see this is in buffers. And so we'll wrap this up in the next lecture, in the next lecture component, where we'll talk about buffers and the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation.